Hello and welcome to the fifth video in this series of videos on programming HS Engine in C. The last video we made a lot of progress with our definitions defining our board structure here, board structure type, and in this video we're going to add a few more things into this board structure type. First thing we're going to look at adding is something called the castling permission. And I'm going to add in some more enumerated constants and then explain exactly what I've added and why. So I'm going to add in something called white king castling equal to 1, white queen castling equal to 2, and black king castling equal to 4, and black queen castling equal to 8. Okay, as you know during a game, if you've well, you'll know if you've read up on the rules of chess. White and black can castle or perform a move known as castling, where the king moves two squares to the right or to the left, and the rook is then placed towards the center alongside the king. Uh, it's got each side has two options. One is to castle what's called king side, which is where the king goes from e1 to g1, and the rook from h1 to f1, or to castle queen side, where the king goes from e1 to c1 and the rook goes from a1 to d1. Now, depending on what's moved uh, on the board during a game of chess, so for instance, if a rook is moved on the board, then whatever side that rook was on, the king can no longer castle. So for example, if the rook on a1 is moved, then queenside castling for white, so wqca in this case, is no longer possible. Same for black, same for kingside. So the way this is going to be represented in the board structure is simply by an int, and we're going to call this castle perm. Now, the reason I've got these enumerations up here is because the castle permission is going to be represented by four bits, if you see. So if I just write them out here, one, two, three, and four, in a comment just for illustration only. And what we're basically saying is, is bit one, which is the white king castling, because that's got the value of 1, tells us whether we can still castle, white can still castle king side. White queen, white queen side castling has a value of 2, which obviously is the second bit. Black king side 4, the third bit. And black queen side castling 8, the fourth bit. So we have four bits here, which represent essentially the castling permissions in the current position. So if we had something like 1001, that would tell us that in, the, in that position, white can castle kingside, the second bit is 0, so we can't castle queenside, the third bit is 0, so black can't castle kingside, and the fourth bit is 1, so black can castle queenside, and so on. So that should be fairly self-explanatory. But it, instead of having, say, four separate integers to represent each of the four permissions there are on the board for castling, it's easier to store them all in one integer and simply use the four bits in this way. And to make that easier to manipulate later on, I've decided to enumerate the one, two, four, and eight here as white king, black, white queen, black king, and black queen side castling. So I hope that's fairly self-explanatory, and these will be used along with this castle perm integer that goes in here. Good. So there's one other thing that we need to do in our board, and that's look at storing the history of the game so far, so that we can undo, if necessary, the game right back to the start. And before we do that, we need to define, and we'll define at the top here, another couple of constants. Now I'm going to define something called max game moves, and this is the maximum number of moves that we would expect in a game. And because it's a nice number in terms of the bits in the number, I'm going to certainly define this as 2048. Now hunting on the internet, I've not found, that's half moves by the way, I've not found any record of a game going over a thousand moves in chess. So 2048 half moves should be more than enough when we define our arrays for containing the history of the game to contain the longest possible game. So, knowing that we've now got that constant, 
and I'm going to go down and we now need to define something else to actually or a structure to actually contain our history for being able to undo a move. So we're going to define another type have a structure and this time we're going to call the structure undo so it contains our information to undo a move. And what we need in here is the move itself, which will be stored in an integer. We'll be covering that in a later video. We need the castle permission before that move was played. We need the ampersand square if the square was actually set. And we need the status at that time of the 50 move rule. And we need the position key also of the position at which this move was played. Now what we need to do now is create an array inside our board structure of this undo information. So I'll just copy this s undo here and go down into our board structure and I'll call it simply history and I'll make this an array and I'll make the array size our max game moves. And there we go. So every time a move is made on the board, in here, before the move is made, we will store in this array at whatever move number we're at in the game, we will store the move about to be made, the castle permission before the move was made, an ampersand square if one was set before the move was made, 50 move status before the move was made, and the unique key of that position before the move was made. So if you imagine the starting position, and we're going to play, oh, and we've played, say, pawn to e4, so we've got a position with a pawn on e4, we'll have stored in our undo a castle permission of all permissions available, no ampersand square, a 50 move status of 0, and the key for the start position, and the move pawn to e4. So if we want to take that back, then we can get the move and know we need to move our pawn back from e4 to e2, and we can set these four values here so that we've restored the position to its previous state. And as I said, these are then stored in array going up to a value of max game moves so that we can constantly take off, this will be indexed by this history ply here, so say we've played, I don't know, 60 plies in the game, we can keep decre decrementing this and use this to then index our history array to take back moves. So for example, if we've got ply 0 and we make a move, his ply will then be 1, and at the index of 0 will be the information of the position before that previous move was made. What that also means we can do it means that each time when we're searching we make a move we can actually scroll through this whole array here and have a look if any of the position keys so the unique keys repeat themselves because if they do we know we've had a position repetition and you remember that in chess if you repeat a position three or more times then the game is a draw. So then in this video we've only added a little bit more but we've added our castle permissions in We've added our castle permission integer here into the structure of the board and we've also added in our undo move or position history structure and created an array up to a fixed defined amount of half moves safely enough to contain any kind of possible length of game. That's it then for this video. In the next video we'll finally or hopefully start looking at actually printing our board on the console and setting up positions. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms are welcome as always on YouTube.